So um, granted, they're deciduous, so you're not going to have leaves up there in the winter time. But for three quarters of the year, um, you know, when the leaves when the leaves are out, you know, we're we're um, you know confident that that will actually provide you know eight to ten feet you know pr pretty pretty quickly uh, or or more of a visual screening. And then you know uh, these poplar trees also have uh, you know, agricultural value. They're harvested for a variety of, of purposes. So, um, so if the landowner you know had had uh, had an interest to do so, he could he could you know utilize those trees for for any number of reasons after the junipers have have reached full maturity. Um, and so then on the northeast side, um, you know we've plant we've proposed planting some uh, some. Chinese chestnuts uh, closer to the road, um, just to you know give a, give a, a better sort of indication that you know hey this is an agricultural community uh, you know uh, it, it could be regarded as a small orchard. Uh, I was told that there'd be uh, probably a couple thousand dollars worth of, of chestnuts to harvest to harvest every year um, uh, by the firm that we hired, and and uh, so those will be planted. Uh, in front of, of what I just described, which will also be at the northeast uh, corner of the site, um, right there. And then along Middle Street, we've also proposed um, just a, a, I guess what we'll call a reforestation strip, so planting uh, you know, native trees, some pine, um, some oak, uh, some shagbark hickory, um, you know, in, in smaller numbers, but still just to um, you know, uh, do what we can to, to kind of help um, with you know, compensating for the loss of trees elsewhere on the site. Um, so that's that's kind of the, the, the big picture proposal. Some of the the other ideas that you know were discussed last night. Um, you know, uh, maybe planting a nominal amount of, of, of pollinating uh, grasses. Uh, you know, somewhere within the vicinity of the street. Um, you know, both because you know it's pretty to look at, but in reality, there's there's real agricultural value uh, to you know increasing uh, habitat for, for bees and other pollinators. Um, so we you know, uh, uh, recognize that you know, that's it's just it's a better site all around and something that we you know take pride in exploring with with, with all of our projects. Um, other you know strategies that we've done in other projects when we've planted bird boxes um, or established bird boxes to create more habitat for critters. Um, or you know, place rocks in certain location to provide you know protection for critters that like to you know forage or or, or burrow. Um, so you know, we're we're happy to kind of talk about you know um, you know uh, 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 strategies to to really make the the land that is closest to the street. There's a lot of critters there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. that like critter built. Oh yeah. yeah, one one of the one of the neighbors yesterday was yeah. was almost dismayed at, at uh, there being a fence around the, the field because he, he likes seeing the turkeys and the deer. Right. Um, but they're not going to go through there no more. Well, right. I mean, deer hop fences all the time, and right. you know, they're, they'll they'll be around. And we can also raise the fence in the bottom so that there still could be movement underneath the fence. Like the turkeys could get under the fence. There's a lot, a lot of turkeys over there. Yeah. Yeah, I, and we, we still. But I'm not really worried about the turkeys, right? He's <laughs> worried about the deer. No, I'm not. I'm worried about seeing the solar yeah. array yeah. from the road. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Because it clearly says in our bylaws that we can't see the solar farm or solar array, whatever you want to call it. So I don't know how many trees you plan on planting and when you plan on planting the trees. Yeah. And what size trees do you plan on planting? Because Trees take a long time to grow, especially chestnut trees. We're trying to grow some here on our property, and they're not growing at all. Oh, really? Yeah, hmm. I mean, they're hardly growing at all. That's good to um, The Aggie School just did a, two years ago, they planted, I don't know, maybe 500 chestnut trees throughout the town to try to get a, okay. a forest going, but a lot of those had died, too. Hmm. Really? They require That's a good lot to know. of water. Yeah, it's really good to know. Yeah, well, but I don't know about the Chinese chestnut trees. These right. are American chestnut trees that we're... Like, oh, well, yeah, the American chestnut I know has had, I mean, that, that, that's been an endangered Right, there was a blight for, and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, right. But uh, I'm very concerned with seeing it from the road. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know how you plan on blocking it because there is nothing there blocking it now. It's clear. You're heading up, up the hill, really. You're heading west. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I just don't see how you're going to block it. It sounds like a good deal. I have a, I have a lot of questions. 
Okay. Yeah. Uh, that, no, that's great. That's, no, that's good. That's <laughs> a lot of questions. This is, this is why we do right. these these meetings ahead of time and and want to. Like have you said, dialogue. Jimmy's getting out of the farming business, right? So you really don't know who's going to farm it. And this smart program, there's an awful lot to read about the smart program, and it does say that the permitting. Uh, I, I pulled up some of it right here. It, it can be streamlined because we're a greens community. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. I, I'm sure you did. Um, how are you going to prevent us from seeing this solar array? Because when we first started to establish solar bylaws, we, you know, we looked at the town of Berkeley and we said, we don't want to see these things. Yeah. You know? And we're not against anybody developing their property or doing the right thing. Or, you know, this all sounds great, and you make it sound wonderful. But when you're gone, we're still going to see those. We don't want to see them. Yeah. Okay? We don't want to see them. It's commendable that you had an, a, 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 an abutters meeting before the public hearing. And I think that it would probably be a good idea that we establish in our bylaw the requirement that prospective applicants have a pre-abutters community meeting because the first public hearing that we have with any solar array is very contentious. Yeah. Yeah. If you have an opportunity to go to YouTube, Dighton Channel, you'll find all of the things that you'll be facing that yeah. we have faced yeah. we don't like to face. Right. And yeah. it's repetitive and it's it's discouraging and it's it's also, you know, we're doing our best for the town. Yeah. But, but for you to have come as far as you have before the public hearing is very commendable. And I thank you for that. And again, if you can oh, squeeze into the into the bylaw <laughs> changes that we're making, a, a requirement for a community hearing, it might go a long way towards making our first public hearing a lot less contentious. Yeah, I mean, we find that it's it's better to be, you know, collaborative and, and cooperative rather than adversarial. I mean, I think that, you know, I, I wouldn't want to live next to a project where people aren't thinking you know, uh, about the details and take pride in, in doing good work. So I drive by there every day, several times. But but that's where the community hearing really is is a good thing because people feel like they're having an opportunity to give input before the hearing process starts. And when people yeah. people often come to these hearings feeling that they've been blindsided. And this board pays the price. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Now we one of the things that we do is before every meeting, before every time we go into a town, we have a community meeting first. And at those meetings, it's a great dialogue. They get to know us. We. It's just crazy. I don't know about it. Okay, because I know we just use the mail. Usually, if list. something's going on, I know about it. How did yeah. that get by me? It was uh, just the abutters list, list that we got. Yeah, we. You're further than 300 list, feet, yeah. and. Did he introduce Sorry. himself? Would he the mayor? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's funny. I was at my brother's barber shop yesterday, and someone in there told him that this is going to happen whether we like it or not because of the SMART program, Got it. Mm. because of the Greens community thing. Okay? But if I can't see it, I won't have a problem with it. But if I can see it right away, yeah, I've got a problem. Well, I think with that, I mean, maybe it's a good segue into some of the, the visualizations that we had um, that this firm do. Um, so just to kind of orient you as you go through the presentation, um, so this this picture right here will show you where you are on the street and that... What page are you on? Uh, this is... Viewpoint two? Viewpoint two, that's right. So we, we took wintertime photos and, uh, and then summertime photos. Actually, the one before that's viewpoint one. We were driving up Middle Street. And what we, what we had uh, our consultant do is first just orient us where we are in the street. We had that photo taken. And then on the picture next to it, you'll see some pink. And that pink is what, uh, you know, that, that's the additional, uh, you know, that, that's what the additional vegetation we're going to plant uh, will, will be, um, you know, after, after it's planted and, and, uh, and grown. And then the larger picture is just pink removed, natural looking color. Um, you know, good representation of, of what this is expected uh, to look like. So, um, I can assure you, we can see these solar arrays through that. Okay. Yeah, and actually, you know, hey, your, even with your little red stuff over here. Yeah. Yeah, guaranteed, I can see it. 
especially when the sun and the glare is on them. Well, wait, there's some anti-glare coatings. Yeah, okay, well, you know, I got $300 sunglasses, and I'm still going to see those. <laughs> okay. well, the panels are designed to, you know, absorb as much sun as possible, so, you know, if, you know the FAA allows solar farms right next to airports so if there was glare to worry about yeah. then they wouldn't you know they wouldn't they wouldn't allow that um, and plus this will also be high it's enough it's not the safety part i'm worried about i just don't want to see it i want to see nature oh no i, I agree but yeah there's going to be farming there's this is this is uh this is a uh, you just said jimmy's retiring do you have uh, somebody so we are talking with uh, uh, and, and let's say for instance somebody's not going to farm it this year you're going to shut your power off i don't think so Right. No, so we, we're, if we're, you can't find nobody to plant anything over there after Jimmy retires, then what? So the economic... Uh, You're going to plant grass? Our, our business plan for this project depends on it being in this agricultural segment of SMART. So what I'm saying is that there, we're not going to be developing a standard solar project. And uh, like our, our business plan depends on it, on there being you know, an agricultural site. In, in Grafton... Uh, the permit was written, you know, so that it was it, it was it was explicitly stated that you know this is an agricultural facility, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, uh, the board would have every um, you know ability to to make sure that that's what we're talking about, right? That you know you're not just giving us a permit and then we build a standard project and you feel like we didn't, you know, didn't live up to what we said. We, we do doing. have some very good solar arrays in our town. That can't be seen from the road at all, no matter where you're driving. That's a, a highly traveled road. I mean, cars driving up and down there all day, every day. That's why we have these bylaws in place, so we don't have to look at these things. It's tight. You know, we want to look at trees. We want to look at nature. So we the, don't want to look at solar arrays. The, the current farmer yeah. is retiring, so you have a lease agreement with him. We do. And uh, the lease, obviously, is to to put in the solar arrays. Now, does he retain the right to do the farming in this lease he, agreement? It, it's a great question, and uh, yes. So what we're talking about is, so he, he knows that land better than, any, than anybody else. So he's got a lot of knowledge that he can pass on to new farmers. So he's actually interested in retaining a small plot within the array so he can continue farming squash. And then uh, the new farmer, um, yeah, I don't want to you know, say any names because we have, you know, he hasn't, Expressly agreed to it, but we over we are. The sun. Sorry, the guy from Over the Sun. Oh no, not not him. Okay. But, no. the, but the, without going into the details, yeah. the, the yeah. point yeah. is yeah. That, that there is a there is a, a line of of succession, uh, succession yes, so the, to speak. The property so that, will still be farmed. So that it'll yep. still be farmed. So in between right. these arrays, nothing will be planted. In between the rows, so the, the, there'll it, be nothing in there. It, it, it will be planted. With what butternut? Yeah. In between, like each row, yeah, so and underneath the arrays. Yeah, so we're talking. So right now, um, the idea is that we could plant squash on every other row, right? So the vine needs space to grow. Um, so in some respects, uh, there's there's this theory that the shade could actually help protect the squash from heat stress, and by having more room to grow, it might be more productive over time. We'll see. But there, there are so many other um, types of, of crops that we could plant. So, you know, talks of strawberries or blueberry bushes. Uh, in Grafton, we're uh, going to be uh, planting um, a lot of leafy greens, so like kale, Swiss chard, you know, even like uh, broccoli, cauliflower, that, that, you know, those sorts of crops. So, um, you know, I think that there's, there's really, a, you know, a wide, wide variety of, of um, crops that we could do. But right now, we're settling, you know, for sure on butternut squash. And then probably some type of maybe uh, maybe it's a blueberry or or or, or uh, sort of like low maintenance but agriculturally you know valuable uh, crop. Yeah, you're gonna have a lot of bird poop and stuff like that. You know, you get into berries. You want birds pooping all over you. <laughs> I mean, that's yeah. what happens. You, you get washed these things. Yeah, right. You up. make it sound wonderful. We're gonna have berries. I, I don't believe half the stuff. <laughs> tell you the truth. I appreciate your candor. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, if you're going to plant berries and strawberries, they attract birds. You know what birds, birds do? They poop all over your panels. You'd be realistic. It'll be part of the O&M right? to clean the panels. I go. was born at night, but not last night. Well, I, okay. I hope you don't feel like we're trying to pull the wool over it your eyes. It does feel that way to me, personally. But that's interesting. That's right. good feedback. 
Uh, well, yeah. I, we're trying to comply with a program that's been written by the state. I was reading and it, and then, you know, that clearly written by, uh, I don't want to get into it, but it's all political. Do, do, do your, uh, I read that they're doing it in, in uh, cranberry bogs also? Correct. Yeah, your yeah. company's doing those? Correct. Oh, are we? Yeah. Uh, I don't think we have any cranberry bugs that we're doing them on. No, now. not at the moment, but I, 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 I wouldn't be surprised to see that take off. And uh, what do you use to anchor each panel? These, they're like monopod poles, it look like. Driven pot, yeah, driven, driven, driven poles. So these will be driven because, the, so the, the minimum height of, of the panel will be probably around 9 to 10 feet uh -huh. uh, off the ground. Um, so that pole needs to probably go 10 feet or more into the soil. Um, right. So the so reason I was asking about the cranberry bogs is a bog probably needs a deeper pile. Probably. I mean, oh, yeah, it's given the so. especially sandier. Sandier, yeah. wetter. But, yeah. but that's irrelevant to this conversation. So they go in the ground 10 feet? Yeah, if, yeah exactly. Yeah. So yeah. In order Auger to, or pile driven? Pile driven. Pile -driven. Sometimes they pre-drill just to make sure that you know, if there's a boulder or something five feet down, you can get through it. So it's similar to telephone poles, essentially. You'll have a work plan, hours, set hours. Correct. Yeah. That's all. Yep. Yeah. Correct. Um, the question about the screening and the uh, landscaping uh, bond. Is that going to go over to the yeah. tree line? Oh yeah, actually, that was brought up last night, and okay. it, and it will. If you if you see the the render the overhead plan that we have here does show it go to the tree line, uh, okay. but yeah. Yeah, I saw that. If I got, it doesn't shows it on one of them in here, but. Yep. Yeah. What is the overall height of these things on average from the ground up? So at the at at the top, um, it would probably be around 14 feet, and then the low end would probably be around nine to 10 feet. Okay. And so the the juniper trees that we're planting will be upwards of 30 to 40 feet wider, and then we'll have the the trees in front of it, um, you know, as we've represented in these visualizations, um, yeah, a few years in. Does this smart program? Skirt can or can it skirt any of our bylaws? I've never heard of yeah. of of what you're you're referencing. To be to be honest, okay. so correct. We have we have to have all of our permits to apply to this program. If we don't have any permits, we don't have a project. So. Yeah, you you know, you make it sound nice, but I know it's going to end up being. Uh, I, have a I, mean, I don't know this. I'd have to ask our assessor. Yeah. Does it stay agricultural property or commercial? Or so, both? so there is uh, the, the current Department of Revenue policy is that you have to go through the 61A process to release it from the program because, in their view, you're exporting energy to the grid. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you know there's this commercial use. But I've heard that there is a, there's a rumor um, that one of the state representatives will be introducing a bill uh, actually to amend the 61A program so that dual use projects can, can keep the land um, you know, in 61A. But, uh, so all they would pay is personal property tax. Yeah, on the Correct. Which, yeah, and, and we would pilot. be yeah. talking to the town about a, a pilot agreement or yeah, I tax could see agreement. like 50, 50, 50 commercial and 61A, 50, but to stay totally 61A, I don't know. Oh, I it's see what you mean. It's a though. good question. Yeah, I mean, I, we're, this is all new and we're yeah. trying to figure yeah. it out, but we, we certainly want to work with the town as it relates to the The UMass so. Dartmouth was really the one to come up with this plan, right? The smart plan. I think. Uh, no, it's not Dartmouth, Amherst. Amherst. Yeah, Amherst, so they yeah. actually have a, 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 um, they have a, a pilot site, uh, just exactly, like, very similar right. to what we're proposing uh, out at Amherst. You can go visit I there. I looked at it online a little bit. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah, so the the professor there, and so they they were one of the first dual use projects in the country, and they actually get uh, research funding from a federal lab, the National Renewable Energy Laboratory. Right. And uh, you know this is um, you know an emerging area of solar, but there is a lot of interest in in, in actually uh, looking at what kind of benefits um, these structures, you know, solar aside, but what what, what, what kind of you know, uh, for example, you know, uh, benefits could you have for um, decreasing transpiration and evaporation? You know, they're observing that the soil is more moist under the panels because uh, it's less hot. 
that, you know, so at, out at UMass, they're actually observing that in hotter and drier years that, you know, the plants that are in the sh partial shade I read that. are doing better. Yeah, I yeah. Read that, yeah. So I think the animals are actually laying down under some of them too for right. cooling themselves. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I think one of, the, one of the just exciting parts about this is that because it's new, there are so many questions that, you know, can be explored. Um, and, and the National, uh, you know, Renewable Energy Lab is, is actually funding a multi year study to look at every region of the country to actually help quantify what kind of benefits can, can occur because of these projects. Um, so you we're excited about you know, just what's going on in, in that world, but even looking at the fact that there's an agricultural high school down the road, like what happens when you know, a student takes an interest in this intersection between sustainable energy and farming, you know, they, they could be thinking about it in ways that you know, none of us could, could dream up at the moment. So. Um, yeah, so a lot, lot, lot to say there. Um, so just to, to kind of summarize things, um, you know, again, I you know, totally invite you to just look at each visualization and you know, let us know what your comments or questions you know, might be at, at the next meeting. But you know, to summarize, you know, this will be about 7,000 panels, um, a you know, two megawatt um, sized array. So that's enough power for around 300 to 400 homes. Um, How many megawatts? Uh, so it's it's 2.8 DC and it's a it's a two uh, megawatt AC interconnection. When you come for the first meeting, will you be bringing the landscaping plan? Yeah, we'll actually all have our consultant there too, and he can talk about you know in detail you know how like how the plantings are going to occur, like you know all, all all the things that I can't you know speak about not being right. that yeah. expert so the size of the trees yeah and and we can provide a, a detailed um, planting plan in advance so you can you know you can see it and, and get a better well, better understanding okay, trees of what grow is. very slow so that's one of the reasons that the poplar trees except you know, for poplar yeah those those will be going a few feet a year so right. um, airports hate poplar trees around them oh they really yeah. Yeah. that's good to know because they grow so so yeah, fast. So fast, yeah. Mm. They have to keep. I don't want to see the solar arrays, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. I think many you said that. that before. Yeah. You know, you might have to build like, a wall. I'll write it down. <laughs> All right. Give it up. And get in touch with Trump. You didn't hear that, did you? <laughs> Say it again. Please. Yeah, I'm not good here. Uh, so. Um, Other than that, I don't have a problem with solar at all. I think it's good for our town. It's it's better than building houses. But I don't want to see him. And nobody else does either. We've already had a couple built in there. They weren't built right. Okay, yeah. so I'll be damned if I'm going to let you build one and it ain't going to be right. Well, okay. I, think, I think we've demonstrated that we're trying to do it right. So that's. Well, everybody says that to us. I, I understand. I know. But we're coming in with a novel. Everybody idea says here. that. Not this idea. We, we have public hearings. Before. Everybody shows up in public hearing against everything, but it still gets passed. Okay. Yeah. Well, All right. We well, actually denied one solar project. Not denied it, but dissuaded them. Right. They finally said they saw the opposition. It's okay. Well, we're from. Yeah. What was the reason? How come that was the so the yeah. yeah. But and uh, you know again that's you know I think we're, why we're willing to be creative and how we approach this. So installing all of the all the visual screening first before yeah. you know we, we do any any project construction. They said um, in the beginning and they did. And uh, you know if there's input about what other types of screening people might want to see, I mean we're happy to, to have that conversation. Correct. You know if, if you know there maybe we could install a wooden fence uh, for example when you look up the driveway, you know finding ways to actually completely you know screen off. Um, you know, the array from that perspective. Um, you know, there, yeah. there are a variety of ideas that we're, we're happy to talk about. Yeah, because there's a road off of Middle Street, too. There's the, on the middle section there, there's, um, you have evergreens on either side of it, but that house or those, whatever that is, the house in the middle there, yeah. that area there, there's nothing. That's the farm. That's the farm, yeah. yeah. So yeah, they don't want any. Well, that's one of the things we talked about. Maybe, you know, this front area would be treated with a, a wooden or a solid fence so that you couldn't see through yeah. To, yeah. to see the, 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 the array. block itself. a lot, but not everything. Right. Yeah, yeah. right. Correct. We do have a. Um, you see that area you got shaded in green right there? This, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 
that's where we need some big time screening. Yeah, that's that's yeah. that's where they really. Uh, yeah, just just so you know, um, this it's uh, let's see, number three, right? Do we need to the corner? Yeah, so number number three in your in your deck is that corner. Um, just here we go. So this is what the end result from looking in from that corner is is proposed to, to look like after the trees are established. So we'll, we'll provide this report um, online as well so you can, between now and Yeah, like right days. here where the farm is, you know. Yeah. Maybe a fence there. Yeah, that's what we would, that's yep. what I was, yeah. yeah. Yep, correct. And the, the farmer expressed uh, you know, a little bit of, um, but he at least wanted to, to make sure it was known that um, airflow is a really important part about a successful squash operation. Um, so he said that if there's some stagnant air, you might you, you might get a little more fungus on the squash. And right now, if the, for example, if it's a, if it's a you know wire fence or a meshed fence, you know air would have. If we have a windbreak basically around every part of the site, this might be one of the few places for for wind to go through. So if it's a solid wood fence, you know, you know it might detract from that. But maybe there are other ways that we can you know, put something up to, to still visually screen it. Not to say we wouldn't do a wood fence, but I just want to make sure that, we you know, the at least board. shared what, what the owner yeah. was, was concerned right. about, so. Well, can't have your cake and eat it too. Is it a point? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just, yeah, I, I just wanted to you know, represent you know, one of his interests to make sure it was it was it was shared. So, All right. um, uh, Dave, Dave used to be the funny one. Uh, <laughs> Dave used to be the funny one. So yeah, so just to summarize, you know, interested in talking with the town about um, you know a, a you know, tax agreement if that's something that you know the, the town is is accustomed to doing. Um, our uh, not a, a pilot agreement. No. You guys don't do pilot agreements. Oh, we don't want to go there. No. They do it. Mm, well, we don't not do them, but no, I know you guys don't do them. They have two yeah. now, and they're both in big legal problems. So. Really? Yeah. Oh, did people uh, renege on them? Or? I have no idea. Uh, you want one? Go upstairs. Yeah, that's fine. Speaking of select, uh, I, I, <laughs> yeah. I don't know anything about the process or, yeah, that's or, the, yeah. or the benefits. Yeah. Or it's or good not. to know at least what some of the other yeah. Yeah, experiences yeah, have been. Yeah, exactly. One of them didn't get approved at town meeting. It's been determined that they. Well, it needs to be approved at town meeting. Correct. Mm. And there was, uh, oh, the one we denied, by the way, or dissuaded them, was uh, a historical landmark okay. up on the highest point in the town of Dighton, uh, where it's an ancient road that goes through there also. And uh, mm. we were rather alternatives. and. We were going to deny it and hope for the best anyway, so he chose not to go forward with it, which was good. Oh, was that the project that you referenced earlier? Yes, yeah. up on Richmond Hill. Gotcha. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, I think that's really about it. I mean, Rich, is there anything about stormwater you want to... No, I mean, I just I, I well, yeah. look forward to your comments. Um, um, I did receive comments from, from the Board of Health today. He wants me to just um, go and dig a couple test pits along because we had a crushed stone. I have stone. submitted comments. You did not. That's pretty not good property it. as far as drainage did and you, all did that. You get comments, uh, not much either. runoff over there. Yes. Yeah. Can you forward uh, it to me? Yeah. I thought no, I did. I, I only got Todd from Todd directly. I you know. thought I did, but oh, okay. I'll double check. Yeah. Uh, That's nice land over there. Anything major? It is. It is, yeah. Our kind of business. <laughs> can't see it, right? So as long as we can't see it, that. I didn't even say that. <laughs> no, we, we, we got that we got that loud and clear when we met with you were here for I think during the conservation or something that one time. I I think I've I've spoken with you about that before, I believe. Hey, not me. No, somebody no. said the same thing then. No. <laughs> Must have been my buddy Frank. Shocking. Shocking. <laughs> and you'll hear it again. Yeah. I think yeah. there's uh, one or two places on the perimeter road you're gonna need a wider radius. With firefighting equipment uh, to make the turn. Um, well, one of the things we've already we discussed with the farmers too is um, widening this this access to um, yeah more like an 18 foot wide minimum access aisle around the around the whole thing. Because if they're towing equipment, they'll need the oh farm equipment. Yeah, but yeah. check with the fire fire chief. He he may want to have more than 12 feet or like uh, whoever said about the radiuses. Mm -hmm. Some of those turns that are 
Kearney radius, I believe. Yeah, there's one there that's radius. a 90 degree turn just before the cul-de-sac. Yeah. yeah, we had, I mean, in our preliminary meetings with him, he had talked about the desire of having a perimeter road that he could access or a road up the middle with the turnaround where he could still get to all sides of the site but not necessarily drive all the way around mm -hmm. the site. Would uh, there be a lock gate or? Yes. Just, yeah. So the farmer would have a key. Yeah, yeah the gate's chief. going to be actually, yeah. the, the, with the, re, um, the reconfiguration after last night's meeting, we're actually going to be fencing off this side and bringing the gate will actually be back here so that um, Jim has, un, you know, undisturbed access around for his When you said you wanted thing. to keep a piece of farm, do you, do you know where? Well, I guess it'd be where we'd be moving panels from, so... That? Kind of up in the north, yeah. Rich, do you want to up in the city? That corner there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we'd be we'd be pulling the visual screening, you know, probably back a little bit too, because you know one of the concerns they raised, well, you know, if one of our trees falls over, like would it be on their property, like, or if they don't want to rake leaves, or you know, things like that. So we, we'll probably try to pull it back at least far enough as the tree is tall. They don't want to see yeah. it, but they don't want to rake the leaves to screen it. <laughs> So, yeah, but, uh... It's only got a yard with a big lawn. Passing that lawn leaf blows before you know it. Yeah. So, Jim will still be farming, but um, this will be certainly a little bit different, so... I'm sure it will be interested. interesting, I should say, and thank you all for your time. Well, Likewise. Thanks for hearing us. Thank you for thank having you guys us. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. And and appreciate um, your feedback as well. It's good. Is there any other questions? Mm -hmm. Um, so we'll just we'll follow up with more information. We'll provide the uh, the plant the the planting plan for all the visual screening far in advance of the meeting, so you can begin to get a better idea of really what is being proposed, the heights, uh, and then again we'll bring our consultant to that meeting so he can talk about it in detail. One thing that some of the other uh, uh, arrays have done is they've done berms to raise the height of the plants initially. I don't know right. if that has any effect on your agricultural planning but something you might think something of. Might yeah, we can look at we can especially for the juniper the tight the tight yeah you'll need some it. low cover because yeah. you know trees obviously grow up and yeah 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 through there so. yeah yeah and that's I think it's um that's the biggest thing with me mm -hmm. yes <laughs> no you know I mean? and another so, thing that did come up the, the the nice part about this being raised is that in the in the in the, in the low respect you know the panels start nine feet up, so you're going to look. You might see some posts, but you're you know you're yeah. going to see land, open land. And then when the crown of the tree starts, it's kind of where the panels are. So in a way, it's it almost kind of naturally. I can show you how high nine feet is. not alive. It's not alive. It's going to be facing southeast. This way. That's the the intent. Right. This way. Yeah. That's right. You see the high end. You're going to see a post. Yeah. Just so you know, he drives right. on Tremont Street every yeah. day. Yeah, every day. We all don't drive with um, cars, you know, some of us drive trucks. Is there a different fire. way you can drive? Maybe we can uh, take <laughs> it down. No, uh, I have a, not a question so much, but a comment. <coughs> I guess a question, too. Does Jim know that is, he's going to come out of chapter land and stop paying? Commercial tax. So we'll, we'll be we uh, our arrangements with all of our landowners is that their tax burden doesn't change. So if we bring it out of sixty one a land, we pay that increase in, in taxes. Yeah. So he's still every year every year. Twenty years. This is why another one of ours is in, hasn't been settled yet. Oh really? Oh, I see. Wasn't aware that the taxes were going to go up. Yeah. yeah. No, we we make it a point. We'll the agreement was written so that they would be liable too. Yeah, it's too bad. The landowners. Oh, really? Yeah, that's they pulled the good. wool over there. Yeah, that's not good. Yeah, that's not good. No, we, um, you know, we, we make it a point. Well, that that's good. You're the first guy to say taxes. We pay the back taxes, we'll pay the taxes, and then moving forward, we'll, we'll do the taxes as oh, well. Oh, that's and then, great. And then our pilot agreements are written as such that even if there's a change in law, we still pay the town taxes. I know there's a lot of, uh, Debate going on right now. There's been a law case in in, this, in the Commonwealth about not paying taxes on solar projects. We don't believe that. We need the town to be a partner with us because at the end of the day, this is what you guys are into it for as well as is getting the tax revenue. So. Did you plan to present this to the selectmen? We didn't plan on it, but I mean, did you think it would be helpful? I mean, I don't know. It might be something well, it we would know. be probably. It's too bad. Um, yeah. 
I guess we could have invited them to this. We meet alternating weeks, but oh, okay. that's good. Then. I mean, well, yeah. I mean, even at next week's meeting, we could at least you know yep. offer that we're, we are interested in a tax agreement, and you know, what better way than to yeah, early you get that ball rolling? The, the more, yeah. the better yeah. you yeah. are. Yeah. 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 Thanks for that advice. You get on the good side of one of the selectmen. I tell you, if you get a pile of work closed on, oh, just tell them that you're all wrong before that. You have to be all rooted into that. Okay. So I would suggest that you go up there and talk to them. Good idea. That way, you will hopefully get into that. Okay, that's a good idea. Fine. Okay. Well, thanks for that. Cool. Next project, I like what's going on with that. Um, it'd be interesting to see how it works out with the with the crops underneath. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate your support. It is a uh, it's new, and you know, thank God Drew's on the team. He's he's dove right into the details to try to figure this out as best as possible. Well. Okay. Enjoy it, but. Uh, well, thanks, and looking forward to right, talking further. Yeah. So you got another one going somewhat? What's that? Potential. Another one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, we're constructing one in oh, Grafton I thought indicted. this year. Oh, we're not in Dayton. No, no, no. This is our only what's project the, in Dayton. What's the town next for Grafton? What's it called? Grafton. Uh, uh, Grafton's far away. Mm -hmm. It's right yeah, up 146. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, right up 146. So, um, I would say it's out towards Worcester, out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's like, all. Uh, Worcester, Worcester, Oxford. Oxford. Yeah, it's not little, little past yeah. Westboro. Yeah, we. Uh, oh, okay. All right. We just hired. Yeah, we just hired the EPC um, today. We actually just awarded the project, so we'll start construction on that sometime. I would think in the next two months we'll start construction on it. So it'll be. Uh, that, that's that's what we're doing on it, but it's been a lot of planning to go into it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and, and actually the consultant that we hired, he's helping us to write the farm plan for uh, for that project. And even if it was just the interest, you know, of interest to you guys, I mean, we're happy to share that. We're going to put a similar plan together when we apply to uh, to the state, um, just to, you know, kind of help make this a little more real. But something we're, we're happy to do. Yeah. Remember uh, what I told you about berries. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll wash it. Yeah, wash my fruit. <laughs> All right, well, thanks everybody. Well, thanks thanks yeah. very much for your time. Thanks. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank, Thank you. You too. Take care. <laughs> okay, Carrie, I have a question. Sure. It is about the notice for the public hearing for the Dayton ZBA in the yes. correspondence. Yes. Oh. And it's uh, a. a of hearing for a decision pers pursuant to section yada 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 of the town of Dayton zone bylaws in order to permit a variance to I Connection Corps to site and operate a medical registered marijuana dispensary and adult use marijuana establishment, including cultivation. What's the variance they're looking for? Do you have any idea? It's that residential part. Yeah, but the setback. So, the setback. Oh, okay. so I thought we changed the bylaw that we are the ones that. We did. But it was the way it was written. It was for not the retail part. Um, yeah, it was only for. It was only for the medical, medical and cultivation and distribution. Uh, edibles. For edibles, but not for the retail part. Oh. So they need a variance for the retail part, and that has to be done through the ZBA. Okay. It is yeah. highly advised not to go back to town meeting to amend it this time. No. <laughs> Again. <laughs> so okay, that is the public input and the correspondence. We've already uh, visited F and G of Section 4 of business. <coughs> the only thing left is two things, to approve the meeting minutes and to adjourn. Would anyone like to make either motion? I make a motion to approve the meeting minutes of the meeting of March 20th, 2018. Uh, 19. Second. 19, sorry. Nine. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.